As soon as I got these bearings, I quickly realized that I cannot mount it on a spindle board. So I used a couple of scrap aluminum pieces to make a T-shape basically to allow me to mount this bearing. Also only after I ordered these bearings I found out that they use 14mm screw and that is far beyond the possibilities of my drill press. Well, now the things will go a little bit crazy, I will explain. I went to the reseller of the steel profiles and I measured the diameter of this tube. It was 39.99, so I was thinking, yep, yeah, that's good. And it was pretty stupid idea to only measure the diameter and not try to fit the tube into actual bearing. But even if I knew that this tube will not fit, I would buy it probably anyway, because... Uh, Precisely ground tubes are extremely pricey. Yeah, and now you probably got the idea what I'm trying to do right now. So I'm using this setup to grind this tube by hand. Yeah, it was quite labor intensive, but it worked. Well, it took me about 3 hours to grind this and it still takes quite a lot of force to push it through the bearing. So it's not perfect, but yeah, I can live with that. Yeah, and here I'm using saw blade to part this tube. And here we go! At this point I was quite a bit afraid that these bearings have a, quite a lot of friction in them. So now when I turn both bearings at once, I was really afraid. Here I am trying to align the um, axis of the tube with rails. And only as I am recording this voiceover I realized that I did not align axis of this tube with the bed plane. Well, I guess it's time to switch the mic now. And finally I got my motor plates done on laser. In this motor I want to use a spacer made of stainless steel for better magnets alignment. These motor plates are much smaller than what I have used in previous videos. But the stator and the magnet circumference is the same. Oh man, look at that, that spacer ring is levitating. Well, that's really nice, but a little bit troublesome. Well, anyway, I should connect these two with some bolt. And testing time! I've had to mill the inside of the stator, so I'm quite glad that I did not damage the windings. Also, this setup is very temporary. Well, it looks like it will not work. But it turned out that I have some weird settings uh, dialed in here. So I reset the whole controller and run this test again. But unfortunately, this was after I disassembled the cover of bearings. Well, I guess now I have to make a new one, at least if I don't want to destroy these bearings. Anyway, on this bearing there are two types of cover. One is sheet metal cover that is pressed on the shaft and one is ceiling cover. Well, the thing is that this ceiling covers tends to have a quite high friction and also they are stationary, so they do not rotate with the shaft of the bearing. Also, if this metal cover is pressed too much on the bearing, it can make contact with the ceiling cover. And now let's wear this bearing a little. Ok, once again, let's test this out. Well, even now it does not turn continuously. But this is because the speed of rotation is too slow and this controller does not like it. I want to have a hole sensors on the stator anyway, so this shouldn't matter. Ok, so in conclusion, so far so good. Ok, so that's all I got for you right now. So, thanks for watching and see you next time.